yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you on that, but if this is the second coming, then the prophecy will be fulfilled, right? So what is the prophecy? Well, yeah, but eventually the prophecy is that the mountain of God will come down and there'll just be this really awesome time on the earth and all the wickedness and deception is gone, you know, it's going to be a... That's, that's the fulfilment of the prophecy, isn't it? That the order is going to be... Yeah, yeah, order is going to be put on the earth and it's all going to be good. That's, that's the end part of it, isn't it? And yeah, what, the second coming, it's always, to me... That always means more than rapture or tribulation or Armageddon or apocalypse. The second coming. That's that's what I feel. Well, yeah, um, didn't you know Herod try and kill Jesus the first time? So it's going to stand to reason that in this day and age they'll be looking at the prophecies like Herod said, you know. Prophets said I would be king, and I was. Prophets tell me, you know, now it says in the prophecy this. He believes in the prophecy because he was, it was true of what, for him. So they will be looking at prophecy. So, and it's quite likely that they'll, they'll do everything they can to, to keep that sort of part of the prophecy away from normal people's ears. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it is interesting times. Definitely is, and as far as I'm concerned, he has come back. He was born in 1962. And ironically, um, so many people are rejecting him. And it's it's fitting because the people rejecting him are, are kind of well I think the p people reject him for different reasons. I think there's lots of different reasons. Um, some because they have this belief that Jesus is God. They you know, they've got stuck with that Bible interpretation that they're one and the same or a part of the three or the only son or rubbish like that, which, which is just untrue. I mean, it's part of God's master plan, that's for sure, because, you know, it does seem like God did intervene. And clear Jesus of like the sins that we inherit or everybody else. Jesus was cleared of them. And uh, yeah, and now in his second coming, he's teaching people the truth. And, you know, several thousand. People have listened. What they've done with that will depend. I mean, I've taken it on board and I'm progressing, certainly am, in my knowledge of God and my communication with God, my overall love for everybody else, the planet, God included. And myself. No, I haven't given up, obviously. But you know, this does make me. I know it's not healthy, right? 
And it is interesting because, <clears throat> like I just said, there will be things going on to to try and stop this prophecy coming coming true, if they can. Dark spirits who uh, will never, you know, lots of these dark spirits will be trying to get attached to leaders if they possibly can and if leaders get a sort of a, a power issue in them an injury that they want power and they love this power it's almost like a god power that this the spirits will be able to influence them that's who they'll be influencing mostly but with smoking um, They're really against it, aren't they? I mean, they're really against it. I mean, I thought initially it was just being made a scapegoat for all the diseases, and I think that was one level. But, wow! Do they hate smoking? And, okay, it's put across as, well, you know, it's... you're harming your children's health, and... if you smoke, you know, in your house, and then nine days later, your child can still be affected by that. I, just, I find that a bit hard to believe, and it's so anti-smoking, it's, it's making me suspicious. You know, if it was that bad, we would just ban the things in, take them out of the shops, if it was that bad. Because they make tax money from it. But if they were scientifically that bad, then you'd think it would be uproar and aghast and how did these things ever get on the shelves in the first place? And let's remember, smoking became widely introduced because doctors were saying how fantastic it was for your health. And this is in a time where, I don't know, 1940s, 1930s. And if you think about the world, I mean, the Victorian age, they invented so many things, they were becoming really clever, and, and they, they also didn't forget the importance of family and the home and community. So the, they were on quite a high level then, and, and, I, and I guess doctors must have, prescribed smoking for good health at that time because of its effects on stress. Now is stress a bigger killer than lung cancer? Why is it that people used to be able to smoke 100 fags a day and not not have many ill effects or you know they still lived a long life but now you know now I mean then Roy Castle he got cancer didn't smoke but so they blamed it on the fact that he performed in clubs where they smoked which could be true you know you could believe that but they've just gone so anti-smoking and I it makes me suspicious because I am aware of the the other things that are going on to to deceive the population, and I'm not so sure about this, but it's also possible that smoking does have beneficial effects. Well, as a stress reliever. Now, if you smoke a fag in your you're relieved of stress and then you do things in your day um, you know, productive things for a couple of hours and then you have another cigarette that may not be so bad obviously if you just sit there smoking fag after fag doing nothing you know, that's obviously gonna send you to an early grave 
it's not going to be good for your health. But there is this other thing as well, with other pollution in the air, uh, diesel fumes, very small particles get deep into the lungs, could, is it possible that a, a layer of sticky tar on your lungs could actually defend your lungs? And you see, when I smoke, I, I will cough afterwards several times, it'll be, but it'll be a phlegmy cough, and then I can either spit out the phlegm or swallow it. Doesn't make any, probably not great to swallow it, but it's better in my stomach than on my lungs, right? So, you know, that's a cleaning process, it's coughing is a cleaning process. And, and you can hear it's cleaning because it's a that phlegm, so yeah, so I'm smoking, I'm getting tiry phlegm and then I'm coughing up, but that is a cleaning process. Now there's other things, volcanic dust, very, very sharp, very, very harmful to the lungs. Now could a tarry lung actually be a benefit to that? And do the powers that are deceiving us, they do seem to know what's going to happen. There's a lot of evidence towards that, anyway. So, you know, are they sort of figuring out what well, they're smoking? Tobacco might, might help everybody um, survive the coming apocalypse, whatever. Um, if there's a lot of volcanic dust in the air, or pollution, or, you know, it just seems to be they want our health to degrade. We've got, you know, since that time in the 1930s, say, when doctors prescribed smoking as good for you, or even since they started saying it's not good for you, I mean, all the new... Illnesses, I mean, cancer was just an increasing thing, and, you, and then you've got meningitis in children and stuff. We've got asthma, we've got dementia, we've got Alzheimer's. So we've got all this range of new diseases, and diabetes is around the corner. I mean, we've got obesity. You know, I've, I've yet I've yet to meet someone who doesn't have any vices. Um, I mean, you see people outwardly who appear not to have any uh, vices, but you look a bit into it. They're quite. They can they can be quite addictive to having people do things do things for them or. You know, other things that you don't really think of as addictions or vices. But you'll see there by what they do in their day. Unless they go out and spend 12 hours a day praying or meditating or, you know. Even people who just do voluntary work, you know, it's like, I don't know. There's always a vice. And if you don't do what you want to do, well, you end up doing something, and a lot of people eat. Eating is a big one. And power, wanting power, wanting power and influence, wanting lots of money, that's, that's basically the equivalent. You know, that's like an addiction of ice. So even if you don't smoke, You're not necessarily following the narrow way. Yeah, I should let you get an ed a word in edgeways, but you're only imaginary, so just just to try and help get my points across.
Yeah. So I think um, I think the force is against the second coming is coming, and they can't challenge God. God's plan is going to happen, right? But they're going to try and emulate. They're going to try and emulate it. They're going to try and create their own second coming. I think. And there may be some sort of cyclical planetary disturbance on some sort of level, you know, which is happening. But there might be an asteroid impact or something. And they'd known about it. And they've been planning this for a long time. And you have to think these people are people who've built nations. And, you know, they plan ahead and they're clever. So, don't expect it to seem obvious or easy or it's going to seem weird. Or, you know, could that possibly be true? It's, it's going to be like that. And if you've heard of the Knights Templar and their, their prophecy of their idea of a new world order, and they say, you know, beware of the intellectual. This is to their own people. Beware to the intellectual, you know, they can possibly see through the deception and I just have faith that God is ultimately in control and knew everything that would happen and that the prophecy of this God coming down the mountain and a, a new world order like from God's perspective not from the Catholic Church's perspective that you know it's it's of course it's going to happen and I think one of the things that will make it happen is people on earth becoming more aware of God and wanting to learn from God and wanting to be more like God um to understand God. That's something I've been realising lately is you know, God loves every single person on this planet and every single spirit, even the darkest ones. And so if I want to understand God, I need to be able to, in a sense, have that capacity to do the same. And then I could, then I can see things from God's point of view. And I do that. And I do that. Not all the time, of course. Ever trying, trying to do it more. And it's really good. And it's real. It's tangible. You know, for anyone um, still sceptical, still thinking we're just a biological being that evolved from a monkey and we're going to die and that'll be it and that was your life and you wanted to make the most of it and oh, which you should want to make the most of it anyway, that's fine. But for those of you who don't believe it carries on, Sleep is a big clue. You have dreams, which is messages f from your soul, and as your soul is connected to God, like messages from God. I mean, I had a dream that. About two months before, it predicted 
an event that could have killed me two or three months before the event and the event would have been a car speeding round a corner and because I'd had the dream it was enough to make me stop because I knew I was in the place of my dream. It connected me back to the dream. It was there. I was there. This is what I'd been worrying about. And then this car comes speeding around the corner. And as soon as it's gone round, this massive weight lifts off me. And this thing I'd been worrying about for two months, this thing that was coming that I'd dreamt about, I'd had an idea it was going to be just before I went on holiday or just as I was going on holiday. And as soon as that car sped around the corner, that lifted. Now how, how could that dream have known that that car was going to come around that corner and I was going to be walking there at that time? I just left my brothers, they were watching a film. I didn't really want to watch the film, so I said I was going back. Now most of you listening to this will just think, oh, it's just well, it's coincidence. But for me, you know, I know, because I, I, I had all the feelings. I knew, I, ever since the night I had the dream, I told my brother, worried about this, you know, something about when we go on this holiday, I've got this worrying feeling, I was walking down this path, da 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 da. Now it didn't look exactly as, as it did in the dream. Not every detail was the same. But as I was there, it connected me to the dream and I knew this was it and the car went past and I knew that that had been the thing now if I'd not had the dream I would have just carried on walking I wouldn't have stopped would I and I'm the sort of person who tends to just cross roads now there's parked cars so I just would have walked between the parked cars Maybe the noise of a car wouldn't necessarily have stopped me in my tracks. And it did come round bloody fast. And that could have been me done. And, the, you know, that's not the only dream. So, a dream, a dream is a message. The rest of the time, when you're asleep, you're just experiencing as you do in your day to day. And I'd akin a dream to when something happens in your life. Um, you get a phone call, it's, it's a major thing. A letter comes through the door, it's a major thing. Uh, you meet someone, it's a major thing. You know, that's, they're almost like soul happenings in your life, when in your waking life. And then uh, in the sleep life you know you get those similar sort of things in your sleep but what you what you do day to day in your day life is exact very similar to what you do when you're asleep your spiritual body as soon as your physical body is rested you drift you you move your consciousness into your spiritual body away from your physical body and you can go anywhere and you do every night um, I had this sort of vis visualization of a bit what it's like. I I think I have someone who helps me, and I, I I get out the crap of my own life. Probably got a few spirits surrounding me. Get away from them, and it, it's like just a thing. Someone says, "Well, where do you want to go?" And you know, and then you just go there. And you, st the more you're aware of what you do the freedom just to do what you want as you do the more of your sleep state you will be able to remember you just go places see people maybe people come to you and um, you do exactly what you want to do you don't think oh what will Maisie think of me if I do this you don't you just go and do it because and everybody does. There's no facade in the sleep world. There's no act. You are who you are and you do what you do. And it's very revealing to realise what you're doing. I mean, I was 
I've said this before, but yeah, mainly having sex <laughs> in my sleep. Going off, there's probably loads of orgies and parties going on all the time, see, so. It's a very common pastime, shall we say, in the sleep world. Yes. So, sleep is a big clue for those sceptics. And your own sleep and your own dreams is a big clue to your own life. You really, you know, you really can find them as an excellent guide. So, recommend that. And often you wake up in the morning, of course, and you forget where you've been, but everybody must have those times where they're drifting, they're waking up, they're going back to sleep, because they, you always want to be back to sleep, don't you? You only always want to be back where you were. You were enjoying what you were doing. It, it's, I think it is slightly happier in the sleep world, like, for example, I obviously don't smoke in the sleep world. But I do wake up in the morning wanting one. And that is in a sense probably partly the the worldly influence, the spirit influence, you know, wanting me to get up and partake in these worldly things that spirits are still addicted to. So like, come on, get up, have a bag, have a coffee. <laughs> and they'll want you to do things which aren't aren't um, helpful to you becoming more like God and they don't want us to become more like God because they probably realise that in the prophecies that's what's going to happen that is what's going to change the world Jesus has come back 2000 years later We've had a second coming. Now, what he might do next, I don't know. He might not do anything. So even if he hasn't done anything, even if he doesn't do anything next, he's brought the truth back. He's brought the truth. The truth is there. And I've said it enough in my videos. Divine truth on YouTube watch some of the older ones the truth is here and where we might go with that that's what's interesting and I, I did always I suppose you know you always like to feel a bit special don't you and we are all special so we don't have to sort of you know aspire for greatness although just your own, you know, if you want to be the greatest drummer in the world and that's what you want to do, do it, you know, that that's fine. Um, but we are all special because we're all unique. Yes, we are. So that makes us all special. But there's, there's just, yeah, I don't know, it's just be interesting, this thing about people called Stephen, particularly with PH. Well, I would say that because I'm biased. But yeah, I reckon a lot of Stevens get Messiah complex. And I just watched a video on YouTube where someone said about Stephen in uh, Jesus' time who got stoned to death. It, you know, he showed amazing faith. Um, and maybe as some sort of reward for that in this second coming people called Stephen will will see the light but yeah that's, that's probably not the case just you have to allow thoughts you know you, to, to to reach the conclusion you have to go along the path you have to follow it Yeah, so 
that's that's my video. I think I started off pretending, <laughs> pretending I was doing an interview, I was pretending I was talking to somebody else. So yeah, watch out for what you believe, and to avoid being tricked, experiment with truth. That's what Gandhi's life was, he said, an experiment with truth. And I've always liked being a truth seeker. Got my bum hurts. <laughs> Sorry. I've obviously been sitting down far too much lately. <laughs> truth, you see, I'm just being truthful. I've got a big spot on my bum. I don't know. Bath day today. I can have a bath in a bit. Yeah, I mean, um, I'd almost, I mean, I, I do experiment my life with truth. You know, drinking rainwater, I highly recommend it. If you do keep your water butt, so I'm just collecting rain off the roof into a water butt, you know, it's rained on that roof before, so it's been washed. And I've been doing that for about three years. Keep your water butts in a shade place. Otherwise, the warmth, if they get sun shining on them, I've got one where there's sun shining on it, not all the time, but now and then. And that one isn't like um, clean. It's not clean because um, life builds up in it too quickly. So it needs to be in the shade. I don't filter it anymore. I did for the first few months, but then I stopped filtering it. Um, and don't use sun cream. Um, firstly, there's no need. Secondly, it's really expensive. Thirdly, you probably won't get your vitamin D. And even if it has got vitamin D, it might not be the type of vitamin, the right type or the type your body can absorb. Um, you, 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 you're less healthy without the sun. If you um, if you're out in the sun, you need to be able to hydrate yourself or cool yourself, cool your skin down. Basically, the rule I use is this: while the sun feels pleasant, it's doing you good. As soon as the sun doesn't feel pleasant, you're it's not going to do you good. And it's probably because you're dehydrated. So whether you can swim, jump in a body of water, that will both cool your skin and you do absorb water. Or drink. Drink water. Don't use any sun cream. What is the point? More chemicals. Um, I don't use deodorant. I don't use bubble bath. I use the soaps I buy, I buy from the natural health shop, get some really nice soaps. I don't use any toothpaste um, at all. And usually I, I just use a stick to clean my teeth, a licorice stick. You can nibble at the end, it gets, gets nice. So I don't have to put a plastic toothbrush in my mouth. So I don't do that. Um, and if you eat... Um, raw food, raw, you know, raw fruits and stuff, and strawberries particularly have got enzymes in which clean your teeth. After eating grapes or strawberries, you know, or apple, you will find, you feel your teeth with your tongue, they feel, you know, it feels like there's stuff on there. Well, that stuff is actually doing you good. <laughs> it's, it's eating plaque off your teeth, it's... And what you can find then, you rub it off with something, and then they they feel fantastic. Um, l -l 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 I mean, it's not like I haven't got any problems. I had like wisdom teeth coming, which have been, which have been, you know, quite a few years ago. I had a bit of an issue, and still now, you know, the other day my face was aching, and I, I don't know if, you know, my teeth probably aren't the best thing on me, um, but I. You know, I know a lot of people do a lot of work to to make sure they have bright, whiny, shiny teeth and go to the dentist 
lots of times to have them cleaned and you know I don't do any of that so my teeth they feel good they feel strong don't have problem eating um, yeah what else do I do in my life um, well you, you know I, I just I just live it I walk it I'm walking it baby anyway I suppose that's enough gloating <laughs> free your mind and the rest will follow it's all in here in your soul I got a new, um, so, you know, when you're trying to think about what your soul is, it's so like, so this, this force field that my body is in, it, like my soul, and down my back and spine, they're like, that's where the soul is like, um, was separated when we incarnated. And my soulmate, the other half of my soul, went off there, and like this is the half of my soul. And then you know you've got the mind, intellect of your soul, which is like the smallest bit. And then you've got your humility, and then, and then your heart, the heart of your soul. That's that's where your power is. That's where the power is. That's the thing that creates the world around you. And everybody's soul is creating the world around them. So if you ever wonder why the world is like it is, just remember you're creating it around you. God gave us dominion over the earth. You see, and as soon as we realise that, and then we're creating love around us, and when thousands and thousands and millions of people are doing that, we're going to see a different world. But here you have the emotions in the soul, the, the ones you haven't wanted to feel, the ones you've said, no, nah, I don't need that, okay, we do, we do need to have felt all of those, because knowing your soul is about understanding how everything feels. And you just have to feel it once, so that you've said, okay, I know what this feels like now. I don't want any more of this. I, I'm going to do things where I don't end up with these bad emotions. I'm going to do these things where I end up with these good emotions that I like to feel. Now, we all do that anyway. But in having suppressed the ones we don't want to feel, we're, we're stopping ourselves from progressing. Um, so that's how you can progressing within yourself and then you will create more loving things around you and this is the truth that Jesus has brought back so please don't scoff at it um, because you'll regret it <laughs> yeah you'll regret it if it all turns to be true which it is <laughs> it is I know, I know. I told you how I know because I feel. Most of you people who I have discussions with talk about feeling and you, know, you turn off because you've forgotten how to feel. And I had to. I had to. To remember how to feel. I mean, include God, involve God, involve God in everything you do that makes it so much easier and as long as you involve when you say God you're thinking of the mother and father of all of our souls who love us who created us who is vastly intelligent and in everything we can't even comprehend their ways him and her though they are one God's ways 
So involve that God, involve the God who created this universe out of love. Everything, even this little video camera with all these little internal things created wouldn't be able to exist without God having made the universe with his her love. And God's master plan, which was a tweak one human, was that to show us the potential of a single human soul, to show us how powerful our souls are. I think that makes sense. So, lots of love to you, Jesus, AJ Miller. I hope you're doing alright. And um, lots of love to everybody, <laughs> all my brothers and sisters. And um, to all of God's creations, or you won't be listening. There's a dog who's one of God's creations. It's like a link to God. And, um, well, whatever. Looking forward to it. Okay, ciao.